Welcome to Upstart Footy Preview for Round 7. Round 5 and 6 has been and gone. A footy festival, you could say. We had 11 games over 9 days, but we're back to normal scheduling for Round 7. Normally, John Takamura is just on my left-hand side joining me here, but he's done the true university. He's gone true university style and left his assignment to the last minute, and we won't harp on that too much. But in his place, the one and only Italian charismatic man himself, Giulio Di Giorgio. That's a love the pronunciation, Ben. Thanks for having me here. No worries. Good to have you here. Round seven gets underway on Friday night with Port Adelaide hosting Hawthorne. Port Adelaide, in my opinion, Jules, are a disgrace of a football club at the moment. Spot They've on. lost two games in their last two weeks against North Melbourne and Gold Coast, who are on the bottom of the ladder at the time. And I think Hawthorne, after losing to Geelong, will probably be too strong away from home. That's right. The question is whether Port will offer any resistance, Benny. You know, they've amassed a season-low tackle count of 38 last, last week. week. Last week. So, therefore, I think the Hawks will easily, you know, overcome uh, power. Early Saturday afternoon game between the Western Bulldogs and Sydney up in Canberra at Marnica Oval. Just the dogs hosting that one to get a little bit of extra dosh, but they do a good job of it and they've got good form up at Marnica Oval. You were telling me just before, Jules. That's right. The Swans, though, very disappointed that they lost against your Blue Boys last Friday night on the, the night of the Royal Wedding, of course. Of course, most people were watching the, uh, the of course, the Sydney Carlton game, but That's right. got a feeling that the Swans will be up and about for this one and the dogs, certainly not as good as form, I think pre-season many predicted they would be they're certainly not living up to that hype at the moment that's true ben in fact the bulldogs have only lost uh, once in five occasions down at Marnica in canberra so it's a good record judging by that you would think they'll continue their dominance and easily uh, beat the swans by about 10 points or so the north melbourne kangaroos venture down the princess highway down to skilled stadium for a match against Geelong on Saturday afternoon. The two Scott twins going head to head on the Mother's Day weekend. Gee, what's the mother gonna think about this? Oh, who knows really? But the two, Geelong and North Melbourne to play against each other. North Melbourne first went on the board last weekend, now in 14th position, but they run into a Cats outfit that sits second behind Collingwood. Win, uh, win, they've won every game, I should say. That's right. And they are looking absolutely mighty fine at the moment, and they will be way too strong for the Roos on Saturday afternoon. I agree, Ben. Um, they've won six straight against North, actually, and they haven't lost down at Skilled Stadium since 2007, round five, if I'm Jeez. not mistaken. So, once again, uh, I think the Cats will be too good by about 38 points. A little bit of a taste of things to come for next season. Of course, next season, when there's 18 teams in the competition, there'll be a twilight game on a Saturday afternoon. And the AFL's experimenting with this on Saturday afternoon with Richmond versus Fremantle at the MCG. Tigers up and about, to say the least. Dustin Martin in terrific form. Got Jack Rewalt up forward. He's kicking goals on the top of the Coleman Little tally once again. Dockers, though, got a really good opportunity to announce themselves away from home. You know, they don't have a great record in Melbourne, mm. but they're a better team than, than what they have been in the past few years, and I think they'll be too strong for the Tigers on Saturday. Well, yeah, the, yeah, the Tigers overcame the Lions and the Kangaroos in the last two weeks, so it'll be interesting to see whether this um, winning form, they can translate that into another win against their highly fancied opponents. Having said that, I don't think they can. Freo will win, even though they've had the bye. I think they'll win by about 20-odd points. I think you can smell that, Jules. I think that's uh, I think a bit of fire, a bit of smoke, because it's going to be <laughs> burning like you would not believe on Saturday night when Brisbane and Gold Coast take in on each other for the first time. The first official Q clash, it's a tad cheesy, but it gets the job done, I suppose. Both teams really disappointing, though, this season. One win between them. Gold Coast right. beating Port Adelaide last, uh, not last weekend, the weekend before. Brisbane yet to win a game, but they've been competitive nonetheless, Brisbane. Uh, in the last few weeks, and I think they'll be way too good with a few bigger bodies, a few more experienced players, be way too good for, I think, for the That's Gold Coast right. Suns. The, the question is, can the Lions you know, keep the Suns at bay? It'll also be intriguing to see how Riscatelli and Brennan yes. you know, face up against their former side. Yes. So, but I think the Brisbane Lions should easily you know, annihilate, to say the least, the, uh, the Suns by over 50 points. Perhaps the game of the round is going on at Etihad Stadium at 1.10pm on Saturday, Sunday afternoon between Essendon and the West Coast Eagles. Tell you what, Jules, not too many people would have predicted the Eagles and the Bombers to be in the top eight at any stage throughout the season. That's but true. currently at the moment, they are possibly the biggest talking point of the whole competition at the moment. They are in outstanding form, both teams. West Coast against the Dees last week. Of course, the Bombers annihilating the Suns by 139 points for all those playing Whoa. at home. <laughs> really interesting clash, but the Bombers love Etihad Stadium, and I think it's a bit of an effort for the Eagles to travel to Etihad, and I think the Bombers will be probably too good on their home turf. Oh, not only do the Bombers love Etihad, but also Mark, Le Mark LeCra yes. loves Etihad. He's kicked 12 yes. goals in their last encounter against the Bombers. So will you know, LeCra Le 
bit tongue tied there. Um, be a danger up forward once again. Only time will tell. Um, having said that, I think Essendon will be too strong, but they must stop uh, Dean Cox's influence on the game. He's had Big boy. over 20 odd touches and over 31 hit outs per game this season, just yeah. as an average. So they must stop his influence on the game. Massive game in the MCG on Sunday afternoon between two teams who've probably disappointed a lot at the start of the season between Melbourne and Adelaide at the MCG. D's, Dean Bailey's head's already been called off uh, for, and it's we're six rounds into the season. And Adelaide had a really good win against the Saints last weekend. You know, two teams in really you know disappointing form, unpredictable form. I think the D's though. Time for them to really announce themselves, you know, on their home turf, and I think they'll probably be too strong for a young, really young Crows outfit. Unfortunately, I can't agree with you, Ben. I think the Demons' woes. <laughs> All right, don't look at me like that. Yeah, sorry. I mate. think their woes will continue. Um, I think, yeah, the Demons obviously are out to avenge their poor performance against the Eagles. It was insipid, yep. to say the least. Um, Dean Bailey, as you said, is under enormous pressure. Some fans venting their frustration on Facebook and yes. social networking sites. Yes. Um, but I think their woes will continue, as I said, and the Crows will get up by just over 10 points. Now, according to the big jewels, apparently we've saved the best game to last on Monday night. St Kilda versus Carlton. AFL experimenting with Monday night football, so it will be interesting to see how the ratings and the crowd numbers go. Saints in appalling form at the moment, it has to be said. They've maybe a grand final hangover, maybe they're just mentally scarred from that. Who knows what's going on at that football club at the moment. But the Blues, your boys, Julio, mm -hmm. are up and about, especially Chris Judd. Sensational performance Indeed. out of the middle against the Swans Champion. last weekend. And I think they'll continue that form. St Kilda, not in great form. And the Blues, you know, they're, they're going to be a force to contend with later in the season. Yeah, perfectly said, Benny. I just can't see how the Saints can minimise the Blues' small forwards yeah. and their impact on the game, um, especially the likes of Jeffy Garlett and uh, Eddie Betts. Betts. Mm. So I think, having said that, the Blues will win and win comfortably. Also, Zach Dawson, he uh, is one match. He's missing, failed Silly to have boy. his match, yeah, one match band downgraded by the tribunal. Mm. Therefore, therefore, he'll miss out and the Blues will win. He's a silly boy. He's a very, very silly boy, Zach Dawson. Well, that's all we have time for today on Upstart Footy Preview. Julio Di Giorgio, some of your sharpest work. Thank you very much Thanks, for mate. filling in for JTAC. He'll be back next week, and so will I, as we preview round eight of the uh, AFL season. Stay tuned to Upstart website, the magazine for emerging journos, I should say. On and we'll one site. That's right, and we'll see you next time. Well,